Hi, this is Erin Pelliquin from MCP Actions. Today's video will show you how to customize our branding bars and watermarks on our display it templates for the internet. If you want to add watermarks or identity plates and branding bars to your print templates presented for print, you can use this tutorial as well. I'm going to start by going to a collection that I have that I want to make a template from. And then I will go to the print module. Within the print module, I am going to show two of these photos um, side by side, vertical photos using the branding bar. So I'll select um, this template here that says side by side branding bar bottom. And I am going to drag two of my photos into this template. And now I've got this text that says use the identity plate to edit or remove text. Well, the identity plate is over here in the page panel. If you click on this arrow, this white arrow that's in the bottom right hand corner of the identity plate preview window, you'll be able to select edit. Now, the first time you use this, you're not going to have all of the selections that I have. I've created templates that I can refer back to for the identity plate and I'll show you how to do that as well. So I'm going to hit edit and as this window opens you'll see that you've got two options. You can use a styled text identity plate or a graphical identity plate. Now in order to create this text-based identity plate I'm going to start by making sure that all the text that's in this text editor is selected. I can do that by typing Command or Control A. Then I can customize the font, the font style, and the font size. Now I know 288 is going to be too big, so I'm going to change this to about 18. You're going to want to start off pretty small and you'll have to experiment. This is the font color box and I'm going to change this to black only because it makes it easier for me to read here in the identity plate editor. This editor is not very flexible at all. So I'm going to use this color box to select black and then close it. Finally, I'm going to type my message in this field. And I think for now I'm just going to go with copyright Aaron Pelliquin. The first thing I want to do is just delete the text that's already in there. So it is all selected. Again, you can see you can use Command or Control A to confirm that. And then I'll have the, hit the Delete or Backspace button. Now the message that I want to type is simply Copyright Aaron Pelequin. To type the copyright symbol on a Mac, you type Option G. And on a PC, you type Alt 0169. So again, on a Mac, that's Option plus G, and on a PC, that's Alt 0169. So that's my message. I'm happy with it, and I'm going to select OK. And what I can see is that this is too big. I've got a couple of ways I can modify it. I can go back into the identity plate and reduce my font size or I can click and drag on the corner sizing boxes to scale the identity plate as a whole. That works for this one. Now, if you are seeing line breaks, so if this were to say Aaron Pelequin on one line with 2012 wrapping around to another line, you would need to go back in and change your font size. Um, I'm actually quite happy with this and I think I'll want to use it on other photos, so I want to save it. In order to save it, I'm going to go back into the Identity Plate Editor and hit Edit. And I've got all the same settings here. To save it, where it says Custom, I'm going to click on that and hit Save As. And I'm just going to call this My Copyright. And now you can see that I can access it right here in my drop-down menu. So now that's saved for me to apply to any photo I want to use. Now, as we saw, this edit interface for identity plates is not very flexible. You can't easily add line breaks. It's possible, but it's not easy. The best way to add style text is to just copy and paste it from Microsoft Word or something like that. So I'll show you an example. You can see that in this Word document, I've got my copyright message typed up already. I like the font style. It matches my website. 
I'm simply going to type Commander Control A to select the text and then Commander Control C to copy it. And then I'll return to Lightroom. And then once again, making sure that this, this text is selected, I will type Commander Control V like Victor. That pastes the font that I had copied into this identity plate. You can see that it even reads the name of the font and the font style and the font size. So now I'll select OK. And here you can see that this font is actually too big. I'm getting the line break. I can't change that by scaling the identity plate using these sizing boxes. So I'm going to go back into the editor and I'm going to reduce this to 14. And then I'll hit OK. And so now that does fit. And I'm happy with this, so if I want to, I can go back into the editor to save it or memorize it just by using this custom field and save as, as we did before. Now, if you want to change the color of your text here, the easiest thing to do is to use this override color field. So I'm simply going to click on it, and right now it's defaulting to black and white and shades of gray. You can select actually any color you want to here. If you click on one of the shades of gray, you'll see that you get color over here on the right, and then clicking on the color is going to give you a color rainbow that you can choose from. You can also type in hexadecimal numbers or RGB numbers directly. So I've got hexadecimal selected right now. I can simply type in the number that I want if I want to match this to a website color or another color whose hexadecimal code I know. Same goes for RGB. If you know the RGB numbers, you can type them in here. Note, however, that the RGB numbers are in percents. So this is not that 0 to 255 scale like we're used to seeing in Photoshop. This is a 0 to 100 percent scale. So you would need to convert to a percent basis if you were going to use the RGB input. You can also import using hue, saturation, and luminance if you know those values. So I'm happy with this color. I'm going to select OK. There's actually one more thing I want to show you about the color, however. Note that when you've got this override color box visible, your cursor turns into an eyedropper. If you want to match your font color to something from your image or something that you see somewhere else on your computer, you can actually click within the color rainbow and then without releasing the click, drag that eyedropper to your image and you can pick up colors from this image itself. So I could match my font to this picture on the table. I think I also need to um, adjust the placement of this a little bit. So I'm going to click and drag on this identity bar to place it. Now you can put it wherever you want to. You can put it on top of your image. You can put it in this branding bar area. If you want to rotate it, you'll use this field right here. So I could turn it vertically like this and put it in the middle or over a photo, whatever I wanted to do. So that's how you use the identity plate. Note also that you can adjust the opacity of it by using this slider. Now let's talk briefly on this identity plate about adding a graphical identity plate. I'm going to select the graphic option and it says paste or drag an image into this space. You can also navigate to a watermark that you want to use and you would save the image if you like this and then hit OK. And so you would get something like that. Now I'm going to go back to my other one because I like that much better. And I am just going to rearrange it a bit so that it's centered. Okay, so that's how you use the graphic identity plate. Let's talk a little bit about watermarking now. The watermarking feature in Lightroom places a watermark on every photo in your template. So if I were to turn this on and navigate to a watermark that I have designed, it's going to go in the bottom left corner of both images. 
so it's duplicated here and that's fine some of you might want that on your work um, so let's talk a little bit how we customize this and then at the end of the video we'll talk about how we apply a watermark just one time to the image there is a process for that so in order to edit a watermark you would uh, you would click on this watermarking drop down menu and go to edit watermarks very similar to the identity plate editor except that it's actually you've got an easier place to enter text here um, again you can select text or graphical if you select text you type your text here and then you can format it using fonts font styles colors opacities etc you can add a graphic by going to the graphic editor and it says if you scroll up to the top choose your graphic so you would just navigate to your watermark and add it now note that if you are going to make watermarks that appear both on print images and on internet images you're going to want to have two separate resolutions at uh, for each watermark so you're going to want to have a high resolution one that appears on your printed images and a low resolution one that appears on your internet images. Once you've chosen your graphic, you can again adjust the opacity and the size. You can click and drag on the corner sizing box to adjust the size, or you can use the size slider here. What you have to choose is the location for where this watermark is going to go. It can either be one of the four corners or the center or it can be bottom or side or top center. However, you can't move it after you've placed it on the photo. So I'm going to program this one to set up in the bottom left corner. I'll hit save and then I would name it. And you can see that this is already named time in a camera lower left. You can also see looking at my memorized watermarks here that I've got them programmed to go in the center, the center left, the center right. That way, depending on the photo, I can get the watermark in the ideal placement for it. So I've got lots of them that I can refer back to when I need them. So you can see now that this new watermark I've created is on both pictures. That's not ideal. So let's talk about how to place a watermark just once on your image. I am going to turn this, this watermark field off altogether and I'm going to select print to file just as if I were finished with this. I've got a folder set up on my desktop called template imports that I use just for this technique. So I'm going to call this um, the suitcase vertical template and I'm just going to hit save. And so I can see that this template is rendering onto my desktop. As soon as it completes, I'll go to the library module and I will synchronize this template exports file. Okay, so now I'm going to right click on template exports because I see that my exporting process has completed. I'm going to hit synchronize folder. It's telling me that there's one new folder to bring in and there it is. I'll hit import and here's the template that I just created. Now one more time I'm going to export it. I'm going to right click, select export, and I want it to stay in the same template exports folder. So I'm going to have that selected right here. Same folder as original. I also want add to this catalog to be turned on and then I'm going to call this watermarked suitcase template. I want it to be JPEG, I want it to be sRGB color space, and I don't want to change the quality. Now if I needed to resize this template, for instance for a blog that was not a thousand pixels wide, I could do that right here by turning on resize and changing the width to 600. That's the size of my blog, so I like to export all my templates at 600. Um, we do have a video on resizing these templates if you want more information. Now I'm going to turn off output sharpening. I already applied output sharpening when I exported from the print module. There are times when I might leave it on, but for this photo in particular, I don't. 
And now I'm going to turn on watermark and make sure that the watermark that I want is selected. I'll hit export. And then looking at this templates folder, I've got a brand new resized template with a watermark in the center. So that's exactly what I needed. That's how you export a template with one watermark only. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, please refer to the PDFs that came in your template download. They are full of very detailed information on how to get the most out of these products. We also have other videos available on installing and using them, resizing them, adding color blocks, custom digital paper, um, as well as troubleshooting. Thanks so much for watching and enjoy your template.